Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. The topic of this lecture is Integrated Farming System and Introduction. We will deal in detail different components of integrated farming systems and learning objective of this class are to understand the meaning and components of integrated farming systems and to learn the merits, demerits, constraints, challenges of integrated farming system in the country. A glossary of difficult words agroforestry. It is a collective term for land use systems and technologies where woody perennials such as trees, shrubs, bamboos, etc. are deliberately used on the same land unit as agricultural crops and or animals in some form of a spatial arrangement for or temporal sequence. So in this case sometimes you may keep animals or sometimes you may not keep animal in agro agroforestry systems. Aquaculture, farming of aquatic organism, maybe fish, maybe mollusk or crustaceans, aquatic plants, etc. Farming system, unit of analysis of agricultural production defined by the components and boundaries and by the types of interactions among the components and with the environments outside the boundaries. This includes all activities, both agricultural and non-agricultural. Gross margin, the revenue from an enterprise minus the, minus the variable cost incurred. Intercropping, the growing of two or more crops on the same field per year, either simultaneously or in the case of relay intercropping with an overlapping period. So intercropping today we will see in detail because crop management or growing of crops and cropping system is also a component of integrated farming system. Land husbandry, the care and management of the land for productive purposes in order to sustain and enhance the land's productive potential. Land husbandry aims primarily at a significant increase in yields and this requires stabilization of the environment. Land use, it is characterized by the arrangements, activities and inputs people undertake in a certain land cover type to produce, change or maintain it. Livestock systems, livestock here means animals, Farm, farmers rear or raise certain animals. A subset of farming systems including cases in which livestock contribute more than 10% to the total farm output in value terms of where Intermediate contributions such as animal traction or manure represent more than 10% of the total value of purchased input. This is defined by Food and Agriculture Organization 1996. Mixed farming. It involves crops, livestock and or trees. Means trees may be there or they may not be there, but livestock and crops are always there. This includes livestock systems in which more than 10% of the dry matter fed to animals comes from crop byproducts stubble or more than 10% of the total value of production comes from non-livestock farming activities. So after the glossy let us start uh, the main topic that is integrated farming system. So many times it is assumed by people that the conventional system of farming is not sustainable and many people argue that we need some alternative. Of course, IFS is an alternative which is thought to be a sustainable system because everybody likes to have a sustainable farming system that can sustain the income of the farmer that does not degrade the natural resources and overall biodiversity is increased and so on. So let us see what are the basics of sustainable agriculture. A system of agriculture that is committed to maintain and preserve the natural resources base of soil 
water and atmosphere. These three components, soil, water and air are of course the natural resources, ensuring future generation the capacity to feed them with an adequate supply of safe and wholesome food. So such kind of definitions are available for sustainable agriculture which basically aims to ensure the food security and all other needs of the present population without compromising the security of the future generation. Means they should also get the sufficient resources. Positive aspects of modern agriculture. Many times people say that conventional agriculture or our traditional agriculture or our modern agriculture has caused several problems. Of course, they are there, demerits are there, but at the same time, it has got some benefits or some merits also, like high yield and fast returns from the conventional farming or our modern farming. It is increased mechanization. It is encouraging the mechanization. Now you see uh, many states like Punjab, Haryana, they are having highly mechanized farm. Farming is getting, getting mechanized. Intensive cropping so that we can get sufficient quantity of food, fodder and fiber. New varieties of crop plants are used. Maximum utilization of land and water. There is never under utilization, rather maximum utilization. And in some cases, of course, it can be over exploitation also. That will become a, a demerit. Meeting the need of sufficient food. Of course, uh, we were uh, importing food before our green revolution. But now we are self-sufficient, rather we have very good uh, food store in the country that can last many years. Immediate and direct supply of nutrients through fertilizer. So some positive aspects of modern agriculture are there. And let us see what are the positive aspects of sustainable agriculture. Because this modern agriculture may not be sustainable, where we are having intensive cropping and we are having maximum utilization of resources. And of course, it creates some problem. So let us see what are the positive aspects of sustainable agriculture. No sophisticated or imported technology necessary. Environmental conservation and protection. It, it always conserves your uh, environment. There will not be any degradation of natural resources. Or if it is there, it is up to the bearable extent. Healthy atmosphere, healthy food. There is no doubt about it prevent or avoid ecological degradation. Higher levels of disease and pest resistance in this case. Sustained soil fertility, because for sustainable agriculture, sustained soil fertility is an internal part and vice versa. The sustainable agriculture will result in sustained fertility of the soils. Greater biodiversity, efficient use of natural resources. So here, there will not be any over exploitation of natural resources or there will not be maximum use of natural resources. Only what is allowed by the nature that will be done. Uh, Self-sustaining and uh, in the farming system which are sustainable are naturally they are self-sustaining system. Let us see some negative aspects of modern agriculture. That is why we say that it is not sustainable agriculture. We need agriculture which is sustainable. So negative aspects are short term benefits and high cost of production. See year by year the cost of production is increasing. Depletion of soil fertility. Uh, many times farmers are over exploiting the fertility. They are not adding the nutrients from outside or, or therefore the nutrients are removed from the soil by the crop. They may be lost by different mechanism like leaching or volatilization. But whatever is removed, whatever is lost from the so soil, the same quantity is not returned back to the soil. It is nutrient depletion or nutrient mining. So therefore, this soil fertility depletion is happening. Our soils are getting deficient in many micronutrients, macronutrients and so forth. So this is really a serious matter of concern. Health hazards are also there. Our food is laced with many pesticides. In some places, there is indiscriminate use of pesticide, which may be there in the food. And many times, these uh, residues may be beyond the permissible limit. So therefore, health hazards are also there. Some heavy metals may also reach to our food. Increased dependency on external input. Very few uh, farm inputs are 
recycled from on the farm and most of the time farmers buy their inputs from the market or they bring it from outside less diversification these days uh, number of crops uh, farmers were growing 30 40 years before have declined for example in punjab say 20 25 years before they were growing more than 15 crop now they are having only 6 to 7 crop the number and variety or kind of crop farmers were growing has reduced uh, economic display in the society widens now gap between rich and poor is increasing and uh, this may be partly a result of the modern agriculture uh, negative aspects of sustainable agriculture it is not that sustainable agriculture is always good and everything is fine with this it may also have certain limitations one is that longer time to realize the benefits change is very gradual difficult to motivate farmers to adopt the sustainable agricultural practices because in sustainable agricultural practices you need to follow good agricultural practices or best management practices which farmers are hesitant to follow comparatively labor intensive uh, needs proper planning and initial yield is low you have to bear with it initial yield is low because you are not using large quantities of chemicals and fertilizers and pesticide in sustainable agriculture only moderate use of such chemicals is prescribed is recommended now what are the fundamental principles of sustainable agriculture and then we can see uh, is our integrated farming system following those kind of principles is it near to sustainable agriculture or not so interrelatedness uh, of all the farming systems need to maximize desired biological relationship application of prior experience and latest scientific advances to create integrated farming system reduce environmental degradation maintain agricultural productivity and promote economic viability so in sustainable ag agriculture these are three very important part or very important elements one is that environmental degradation should not be there our environment needs to be secured when we do farming secondly productivity is required to be maintained because uh, you are having large number of people and that need food that need cloth that need shelter fiber so many things so productivity cannot be compromised we need to raise the productivity and economic viability the income income of the farming family or household must be ensured no overburden on natural resource base there should not be any over exploitation of natural resources now elements of sustainable agriculture include your soil conservation there may be some soil erosion but efforts should be made to conserve the soil crop diversity is very very necessary if we want to sustain our productivity nutrient management should be based upon some natural principles and there should be uh, very less use of chemicals fertilizer and their dependency should reduce pest management ideally it can be integrated pest management and water quality and water conservation is very very necessary and ag agroforestry can be integral part because it can act as a sink for carbon atmospheric carbon it can reduce pollution and if you have multi purpose trees they will have multi purpose uses and it will help in the increase of farmers income marketing now we come to the real topic exact topic which is farming system a kind of sustainable uh, agricultural system sustainable production system so what is agricultural system it is an assemblage of components which are united by some form of interaction and interdependence and which operate within a prescribed boundary to achieve a specified agricultural objective farming system a population of individual farm systems that have broadly similar base resources enterprise patterns household livelihoods and constraints and for which similar development strategies and interventions would be appropriate it is uh, defined by fao food and agriculture organization 1996 now what is integrated farming system so it is a resource management strategy i think most of you understand what is resource so resources are the inputs that are used in crop production and some may be natural resources and some may be purchased resources 
or artificial resources. Natural resources include your uh, land, your air, your forest, water, soil, all are natural resources. They are given by nature to us and maybe some artificial resources like machinery, farmers use pesticides, chemicals, fertilizers. These are our artificial resources. So in this case, uh, in, in a resource management strategy, so we need to particularly conserve the natural resources and increase the efficiency of artificial resources if at all they are used. So achieve economic and sustained production to meet diverse requirement of farm household. Preserving resource base, ensuring environmental quality, there should not be compromised with the environmental quality. Environment ha has to be safe. Maintaining desirable level of biological diversity. If we really want to sustain our productivity of crops, animal, whatever we have, diversity always beneficial. For example, in case of crop diversity, if you have diversity of crops above the ground, then it will increase the biodiversity below the ground. A variety and number of organism will increase below the soil. So that is very, very advantageous with respect to nutrient availability to the crops. Uh, farming system concept, combination of one or more enterprises. So in farming system, you need to com uh, combine at least two enterprises or more than that. Planning for effective integration of the enterprises. So without planning, you will fail in the system. So planning in advance is necessary that what kind of enterprises will give you more benefit? What should be the selling point where I can sell it? Is there any demand for these kind of enterprises? What would be the cost? How I can make arrangement for the credit if required? How I can make a pond and so on? So all sorts of planning has to be done in advance. Sustainability is the objective of the farming system. When you consider plan, when you make the combination of enterprises and other plans, you should ensure that at every stage, sustainability should be kept in mind. According to Pillai 1990, basic principle is utilization of the synergistic effect of interrelated farm activities and conservation, including the full utilization of farm waste. Synergistic, I, I think you, you understand. If not, I can explain it. Synergistic means when two factor, one factor is suppose A and other factor is B. The weight of A factor is suppose 10 and weight of B factor is suppose 20. So in total, their weight is 30. When they are separate, when they are separate, if you add it, it is 30. But when you bring A and B together, if it gives you 40, 40, which is more than their, their total separately, then it is interaction. Means when two enterprises come together, they benefit each other and overall the output is more than the average sum of their individual. So this is interaction. So it is based on concept that there is no waste and waste is only a misplaced resource which become valuable material for another product. So enterprises should be complementary. For example, if you keep animals, very simple example, livestock, say cows or buffaloes on the farm and you grow the crops also. So they complement each other. The, the male bulls or male calf can be used for plowing purpose, land purpose in the cultivation of the crop. And similarly, they will also give you dung and manure that can be used to fertilize the land or soil and at the same time, the, you can grow the plants or fire, this fodder crops which, which can be fed to the cattle or animals. So this is how they are complementary and it is not new thing. In India it is happening for 10,000, 15,000 years since in the olden days also and it was successful and it was success, sustainable also. So the waste of one enterprise can be the resource for another enterprise. Goals of integrated farming system, there are four major goals like maximization of yield of all component enterprises to provide steady and stable income. Number two, rejuvenation of systems productivity and achieve agroecological equilibrium. The third goal is to avoid buildup of insect pests, diseases and weed population through natural coping system and keep them 
at low level of intensity. So here, crop of uh, role of crop rotations becomes very very indispensable. Through crop rotations, one can manage nutrients, one can manage insect pests as well as diseases in the system. So it's, it will help in in reduction of the chemical use in the farming, reduce use of chemical. Now, integrated farming systems can have two or more enterprises. So you can see uh, there are several enterprises. The selection of enterprises will be decided by the farmer or the grower who want to do it because he will decide whether this kind of uh, enterprise is feasible, can it be workable here, can I find markets for my product. So there may be many options and depending upon the local conditions one can combine any number of enterprises. For example, one option is pond. So in pond, you can have fishes, fish, you can have some ducks, ducks can be there in the pond or maybe some other water animals can be tried and one can have biogas. If you have animal or livestock, then biogas, biogas is really very good option. So this biogas can, can be there and here your animals dung can be used for this purpose and then one can have poultry, poultry you know you can sell the eggs or meat, uh, poultry is done for meat purpose also and mushroom is quite often uh, used and now it is spreading very fast in the country and there can be dairy, there can be many more additions to it like beekeeping can be there, your madhumakki palan or you can have pigri also, pigs, pigs can be raised, dakri also. So many things are there that can be added to increase the income and to increase the sustainability of the system. So you can see what are the different components that are possible in the integrated farming systems like olericulture. Olericulture means you can have vegetable production. If you have uh, integrated farming system around the peri-urban area or around the cities, then production of vegetable will be very, very profitable. Pomology is your fruit production, so several variety of fruits are available that can be chosen depending upon the local conditions and their suitability. Means climatic conditions decide if I want to grow a tropical plant in Srinagar, that may not be possible. Similarly, temperate plant of Srinagar, I cannot grow in Tamil Nadu. So the selection of fruit crop will depend upon the local climate. According to that, one can select the fruit crop. Floriculture, particularly near the city areas or urban centers, floriculture could be a very good business. And now many farmers are doing it under the, under the shade or an, under the cover, polyhouses. And PC culture is your fish culture. Field crops are most of the time, they are part of the integrated farming system. Because field crops, you have land and you have animals and you have many other things that can be combined with the crop production. Livestock is your animal, you can have your uh, animal like cows, buffaloes or goat or sheep or duckery is also there, duckery, ducks are there. In northeastern India, duckery is very successful. Mushroom, apiary is your honeybee or beekeeping, poultry, biogas, sericulture uh, is your resham kid, sericulture and agroforestry. Now you, you can see many more options are there, poultry, mushroom, apiary, dairy, your crop production, fishery, duckery, biogas, etc. Now what are the principles of farming system, fundamental principles, minimization of risk. In, uh, it is the topmost priority of the people involved that risk should be minimum. Our systems or combination of enterprises should be such that the risk is minimized and recycling of waste and residue as far as possible, they should be recycled right on the farm locally. Integration of two or more enterprises, this is necessary. Uh, maximum productivity and profitability, you want profits, you want ecological balance. Generation of employment potential, this is really good for rural household and farmers who are marginal, who have very less land, and maybe less than one hectare or less than less than say two acres and like that. So for those farmers, it can give lot of employment opportunity, this integrated farming system. Increased input use efficiency, this is priority, this should be priority that with minimum quantity of input, we should get the 
maximum or best possible output use of end products these are the waste item or by products they should be recycled or they should be used for uh, other enterprises now objectives of farming system productivity profitability balance food environmental safety income or cash flow around the year energy saving or sometimes it can be clean energy now emphasis of the government of india and in the world is on clean energy particularly solar power now there is extension of solar power in the country and solar power can be used or can be exploited under a, a integrated farming system also meeting fodder requirements solving timber and fuel fuel crisis employment generation scope for establishment of agro industry so this ifs can be combined with agro industry certain value addition can be done right in the integrated farming system enhancement in input use efficiency so let us see in detail about these objectives how they can be fulfilled productivity farming system provides an opportunity to increase economic yield per unit area per unit time by virtue of intensification of crop and allied enterprises here intensification of crop is followed which may help in increasing the income time concept by crop intensification and space concept by building up of vertical dimension through crops and allied enterprises so here you can do the vertical vertical kind of farming is also possible here for example just for an example in case of uh, integrated farming system if you have crops and if you have a fence around the pond for example and you can have some climbers some vegetables which are which can climb there so same same is an example there may be some cucurbits there may be some other vegetables which can be grown on the fences so no space is left unused there profitability is the system as a whole provides an opportunity to make use of product produce or waste materials of one enterprises as an input in the other enterprises thus by reducing the cost of production the profitability and benefit cost ratio works out to be high so it is in favor of the farmer and this is the main objective of farming increasing the income of the farmers or the household potentiality soil health a key factor for sustainability is getting deteriorated i have already told you that soil fertility is declining in the country and polluted due to faulty agricultural management practices for example excessive use of chemical fertilizer pesticides herbicide it it may lead to reduce fertility of the soil so but farming system you can give some organic supplementation through effective use of manures and waste by recycling them so that is why this uh, uh, soil fertility is very well maintained under integrated farming system because lot of resources are available and that can be recycled to supply the nutrients and improve the physical chemical and biological properties of the soil balanced food so here diversification is the key in integrated farming system so diverse enterprises are involved and they produce different sources of nutrition namely proteins carbohydrates fats and minerals etc from the same unit of land so in this case um, certain uh, malnutrition can be avoided see the cases of people where they are poor and they are eating just one kind of food some people eat only rice and fish and some people eat only just wheat 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 or or depends upon one or two kind of food they get so under those conditions you get malnutrition but in integrated farming system where you have some animal products that can be eaten by household or members of the family of the farmer you have fruits you have vegetables you have variety of crops you have milk you have honey so many things are there even the children if they take a small small part of these kind of things then they will not suffer from malnutrition environmental safety the very nature of farming system is to make use or use or conserve the by product waste product of one component as input in another component and use of bio control measures so these eco friendly practices bring down the application of huge quantity of chemical fertilizers pesticides and herbicide that are very very dangerous for the soil for human health and also for the environment 
income or cash flow around the year. So in this case, you have many enterprises. So in some enterprises, at a particular point of time, you may get some income. Uh, or during other months, you may get income from other enterprises. So that way, you can get income around the year. And also, employment generation is very, very important in this case. Saving energy. Availability of fossil fuel has been declining at a rapid rate, leading to a situation where in the whole world may suffer for want of fossil fuel by 2030 AD. Even today, there is crisis of fuel everywhere, petrol, diesel, and prices are increasing. So how long we can remain dependent upon these kind of fossil fuel? We need some alternative sources of energy. So in farming system, effective recycling of organic waste to uh, generate energy. For example, if you have a biogas plant, you can get biogas that can be used to light lamp, that can be used to cook the food uh, in the farmer's family. So we need to look for alternative sources of energy. Meeting fodder crisis, integrated farming system, every inch of land area is effectively utilized. So LA cropping or growing fodder legume along the border of water courses Intensification of cropping, including fodder legumes in cropping system, help to produce the required fodder. So, fodder can be produced right at the farm. Now, what are the determinants of farming system? Means, under a particular farming situation, what would be the combination of enterprises, how it can be run, how to plan it, and there are certain factors that determine it. So, let us see what are the determinants of farming system. Factor 1, physical and biological elements. So physical ele elements may be land, soil quality, topography, climate, water, location, distance, etc. They will decide the kind of combination of enterprises. For example, soil quality. If your soil is not fit for cultivation of crop at all, it is, it is problem soil, salt affected soil, then you can, you can use it for some other purposes or you can plant some, uh, some forestry trees or some other, uh, other trees that can be grown in salt affected soil or there may be some other uses. You can dig a pond or you can do some, uh, make some other use. So this will decide and topography is your elevation uh, or whether the land is flat or you have some hills or hillocks, what kind of topography is there. Climate, according to climate, you need to choose your enterprises water availability is very, very important and so on. The biological elements are also determinant like crops and livestock, physiology, diseases, etc. If in a particular, uh, particular climate or region, uh, you have diseases or insect invasion for on livestock, on a particular kind of livestock or breed, you can think of not taking that kind of enterprise there or change the kind of livestock. Uh, factor 2 is endogenous human elements. The system revolves around the farmer whose family and means of livelihood are intricately linked. The farm family has available resources under their control in terms of land, labor, capital and management. The quantity and quality of these resources are conditioned by the characteristics of the family that is size, age, etc., education and management skills available labor, capital, power, attitude and goals of the family. So there are some endogenous humus elements. Somebody may not be interested to adopt a particular, uh, particular enterprise or it depends. For example, there are some community in India, they will not like to grow or raise your pigs. They do not want piggery and at the same time, similarly, some people may not like to, to slaughter their their farm, farm animals like cows or buffaloes. So it depends and some may, some may like to slaughter uh, your uh, goats and sheep. So it depends upon individual person. In certain parts of Punjab, people, certain farmers, they do not want to grow tobacco. However, tobacco can be grown in that areas. So sometimes the socioeconomic religious issues come into picture, which are very, very endogenous to humans. Exogenous human variables, factor 3 is the exogenous humus variable, uh, human variables which govern the allocation of available resources by the farmers. So farm producer need incentives to change their 
farming methods and production patterns in desirable directions. Now see what are different types of integrated farming system which are possible or what kind of combinations can be made like crop livestock farming system. It is really the most common system and which is uh, being followed in Asia or world since, century, since centuries. Crop livestock and fishery farming system then one addition could be fishery to the system. This is also getting common. Crop, poultry, fishery, mushroom farming system one combination. Other could be crop, fishery, duckery farming system because fish and duckery both can be, can be uh, uh, employed in ponds. Crop, livestock, fishery, vermicompost farming system. So, I have seen that in some places now people are introducing vermicomposting in the integrated farming system and they earn very good money out of vermicomposting. Crop, livestock, forestry farming system, this is also good system because in forestry you can have variety of trees, you can have some uh, horticultural trees, fruit trees, etc. Uh, crop, uh, agri silvi uh, apiary farming system means agricultural crops, your trees and your apiary is your beekeeping. And then agri horti silvi pastoral system. So, here you can have crops, you can have horticultural systems, you can have trees and you can have pasture also. Means here animals can be combined. Now, what are the elements of integrated farming system? Watershed. I think most of the students know watershed. So, watershed is an area which is re uh, receiving the rainfall and it is draining out from a common point. So, so, the whole area which is draining water into a common point is called as watershed. So, watershed management could be there if you are, uh, you are interested to harvest the water and bring that water to the pond or recycle that water and this is very much possible in northeastern states of India, in lower Himalayas or any part of hills or hilly places, mountains. This kind of system is really good where we need to go for watershed management. And farm ponds, biopesticides are also element. Biofertilizer should be integrated in the integrated farming system. Plant products can be used, certain extracts can be used as pesticides. Biogas can be integrated. Solar energy is very important, I have already discussed it. Compost making or vermicompost making can be element and green manuring is required to sustain the fertility of the soil and rainwater harvesting which can be part of the watershed management. Now see some cropping system related terminology because cropping system or crops or crop management is also an important part of farming system, integrated farming system. So what is a cropping system? It is principles and practices of cropping and their interaction with farm resources or available farm resources, technology, aerial and edaphic environment to suit the needs and production strategy. It is an important component of farming system. Cropping pattern, the yearly sequence and spatial arrangement of crop or of crops and fallow on a given area or farm, region or province or, or a country. So, cropping pattern is a very large, is at a very large scale very big area and cropping system is for a, a small region. Now see multiple cropping, there may be two kind of cropping, one can be monoculture or mono, monoculture, other can be multiple culture. Monoculture means growing one kind of crop year after year. You are taking just one crop of rice every year in certain areas. So this is your monoculture and multiple cropping is your growing two or more crops in a year that is multiple cropping and it can be divided into two, sequential cropping and intercropping. Sequential cropping means growing two or more crops in a sequence one after other on the same field in a year. Uh, succeeding crop is planted after the harvest of the preceding crop. Crop intensification is in time dimension, no intercrop competition and farmers manage only one crop at a time. So no intercrop competition means you are growing just one crop. In case of intercropping, it may be possible. So, in intercropping, growing two or more dissimilar crops simultaneously on the same piece of land in distinct row arrangement. 
mostly it is done in case of uh, widely spaced crop which are base crop like cotton, sugar cane or up to some extent maize. You can take certain intercrops like some pulses uh, or oil seeds can be taken and uh, the optimum plant population of base crop is combined with appropriate population of intercrop. Intensification of cropping uh, is bo both in time as well as in space means temporal and spatial. Intercropping types are, are about four, Mix, mixed intercropping, growing component crops simultaneously with no distinct row arrangement. Row intercropping, growing component crops simultaneously in different row arrangement. Strip intercropping, growing component crops in different strips wide enough to permit in, uh, independent cultivation. So they are in strips. Relay intercropping, growing component crops in relay so that growth cycle overlap means uh, the next crop is sown before harvest of the previous crop that is overlapping. Mixed cropping growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land either sown after the seed of the crops intended to be sown, uh, grown, mixed or sowing alternate rows in various replace, replacement ratio. So mixed cropping generally farmer do what they do they mix the seed of two crops and then they broadcast. That is your mixed cropping. Monoculture, the repetitive growing of the sole crop on the same piece of land. Staggered planting, sowing of crop is spread over and around optimum period of planting either to minimize risk or to use labor and machinery more effectively or to minimize competition. So staggered planting means suppose you are planting wheat, so some wheat you can plant on first of November, some on 10th, some on 15th, like that. This is known as staggered planting. Ratoon cropping means the cultivation of crop regrowth. For example, in sugarcane, you grow the main crop and then you harvest the main crop in the first year and you allow the, the stubbles to produce a second crop of ratoon. This is known as ratoon. Mixed farming, in mixed farming, you combine the raising of animal with the crop. Now, sericulture, sometimes sericulture or rearing of the silk worm is known as sericulture. In certain areas, it can be adopted, particularly in some southern Indian states. So, it involves mulberry cultivation, silk rearing, silk worm rearing, reeling of the silk from the cocoons, and there are several parts, several actions of this enterprise, sericulture. So, India is the second largest producer of the mulberry silk produces uh, 0.14 lakh tons of raw silk from a mulberry crop area of 2.82 lakh hectares. So there may be changes in this area and this production. You, you can update yourself for this data. But Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Jammu Kashmir are the major states which produce the silk. And moriculture, moriculture is the cultivation of mulberry plants is, is, it is called moriculture, means they are complementary. Moriculture and this sericulture, because in sericulture you have silkworm, but where they will, they will feed, where they will, they will get food, they will get food from the mulberry plants. So mulberry leaf protein is the source for the silkworm, Bombex mori, to biosynthesize the silk. 20 species of mulberry, mulberry is a bush or tree, Four are commonly cultivated like Morus alba, Morus indica, Morus serrata and Morus latifolia. Sometimes you can call it Sehatut, something like that. Recommended NPK is 120, 50, 50 kg per hectare under rain fed and 300 to 120, 120 kg and P205 and K2O per hectare under irrigated conditions. There may be more recommendation, new recommendation. One can check when you start this moriculture. Varieties may be Canva 2, M5, S13, S30, S36, S41, S54, DDV1 and Ananta. Spacing may be generally 90 by 90 under rain fed condition and 120 by 60 under irrigated condition and it is mostly propagated by the cuttings. And planting season is July, August that is rainy season and crop can give good yield for 12 years after which they are pulled out and fresh planting is done. The yield of mulberry leaves may be 30 to 40 ton per hectare per year. 
Now agroforestry. So agroforestry is also important and many times it is part of integrated farming systems. So integrated agroforestry systems uses multi-purpose tree species including fruit trees with arable crops and or pastures for sustainable development of degraded lands. So there are many purposes of agroforestry depending upon the land conditions and need of the farmer. Woods help to solve some of the pressing problems including food needs, amelioration of polluted environment and simultaneously achieving the national target of 33 area under trees and grass cover means we want to increase the forest area then agroforestry should be encouraged. And you see this these kind of agroforestry systems are there in northern India you can see eucalyptus and it is grown on the boundary of the fields by farmers in, in many parts of the country but it is dominating in northern India and then they grow crops like sugar cane or it may be pulses like black, black gram or green gram and you can see this picture this picture is quite common in northern India in UP, Haryana, Punjab etc where farmers are using eucalyptus and sometimes they also use popular plantations these popular plantations you can grow turmeric, you can grow wheat, you can grow many crops under the shade because it also uh, it, it, get, it sheds its leaf during uh, winter months. So wheat can be successfully grown. You see this is turmeric. So such kind of uh, having two crops, three crops under agroforestry system it is possible. Uh, let us see multifunctional agroforestry systems in India. They are for several purposes. Agroforestry for small holdings. Farmers are small, small lands are available. In those cases, they can go for agroforestry. Agroforestry for soil buildup. Your soil is having low fertility, there is no carbon, organic matter. Under such circumstances, agroforestry can be helpful. It can also reduce the soil erosion, improve the fertility, and also help in the sequestration of carbon in the soil. Agroforestry for economic gain, you can do it at commercial scale also, you can grow certain fruit trees and then in between them you can grow crops. So it can be done for economic gain also or sometimes timber, timber or wood can also be sold etc. Agroforestry for water use efficiency, agroforestry for as carbon sink, you can do it, or agroforestry for biodiversity. Now agroforestry systems for sustained agricultural production. There may be variety of agroforestry systems and uh, most of you understand these systems like agri silvi uh, cultural system, LA cropping, silvi horti, agri horti, silvi pastoral system. There are so many combinations of trees, crops, pastures, animal in agroforestry systems. Sometimes you can have horticultural trees of fruit trees, vegetables, etc. Dairying is another enterprises that can be easily integrated in the integrated farming system and it is successful also. It is source of income to many farmers in our country. We have National Dairy Development Board which has helped many farmers to earn good money and many more cooperatives are coming in dairying. So it, it may be a good enterprise to raise the income of the farmer and also to sustain the fertility of the soil. So dairy farming is one of the economically viable enterprises that could provide constant income throughout the year to farmers when combined with cropping. The success of dairy depends solely on the availability of inputs like feed and fodder and better marketing facilities for milk. Means input for the animal, you need feed, you need fodder, you need minerals, water, if they are managed then you can earn good money. And second thing is that there need to be remunerative prices for the milk or milk product. Better now some farmers and some people are coming up and they are making some value added product of the milk and they are selling and they are, that way their income is increased. To maximize benefits from dairy selection or proper breed to suit the local conditions is very, very essential. Definitely you need to choose the breed depending upon the local conditions, availability of the facilities and so on. Biogas or gober gas plant could be another integration or options that can be integrated if you have animals as a component enterprise and biogas plant is a system comprising of a gas 
holder and a digestion chamber in which gober that is dung or cow dung or, or buffalo dung can be treated anaerobically to produce two biogas, uh, biogas and organic manure. So, through this you can get biogas that can be used for domestic purposes to light your houses or as a cooking gas it can be used and also biogas slurry is very very important. It is, it is rich in nutrients NPK and some micronutrients and it can be directly used uh, with irrigation water to fertilize the plants or alternatively it can be used after drying it in the fields uh, but there is no uh, time I means time is not waiting time is not required you can immediately apply this this uh, slurry in this biochemical process the cellulitic material are broken down to methane and carbon dioxide so main constituent of biogas is methane and carbon dioxide it is a clean unpolluted and cheap source of energy which can be obtained by a simple mechanism and little investment India was the first country in the world to have developed a biogas plant on an experimental basis as early as 1939 followed by the installation of a commercial model in 1954. Later the Khadi and Village Industries Commission adopted the biogas program in 1962 and was instrumental for initiating biogas plants in India. Now you can find many biogas plant in different states of India and it is uh, being adopted by the farmers. Initially there were some failures but those kind of mistakes have been corrected and now it is a successful technology being adopted by farmers. Next enterprise could be sheep and goat rearing. So followed by small and marginal farm families and landless laborers in drought prone hilly and desert areas. So they, these small animals can be very very helpful in raising the income of uh, marginal farmers or landless laborers. Goat farming needs less capital when compared to dairying and the animals can be raised in small farms as well. So initial investment is low. You can buy goat at a very cheap, cheap price but if you want to buy buffalo or, or uh, some high breed uh, good breed cows they are very very expensive so, so in such cases that is a, a good bet it provides employment opportunity round the year for the farm household and underemployed rural population and forms one of the important practicable and profitable components of an integrated farming system so wherever possible the sheep and goat farming uh, goat rearing can be integrated you will also get sheep and goat manure that can be sold or that can be used after composting as a manure and not much financial inputs are required but a steady income if you go for sheet and goat manure rearing even with poor grazing facilities uh, and with minimum uh, managerial resources sheep and goats can return high profits to the farmers they not only help the household with regular cash flow but also improve the health of family members by providing milk and meat regularly. So this uh, particularly goat provides good quality of uh, milk. Now poultry farming is another option that can be integrated in integrated farming system and it, it really raises income of the farmers and now farmers are coming up with the kind of uh, industrial production I can say industrial production of course that is uh, questionable. But in integrated farming system this poultry should be given a respectable life and the poultry farming can add to the farmers income. Uh, emerging as, a, as an important livestock activity in farming system for enhancing economic stability, nutrition and providing regular employment and cash flow round the year. So poultry mean account for uh, uh, poultry meat accounts for about 27 percent of the total meat consumed worldwide and is, uh, its consumption is growing at an average of 5 percent annually. Now you can check some more data. Broiler production is increasing at the rate of 12 percent per year. So broiler I think you know broiler means the, the male particularly male hen that, that is raised for meat. 
Now, fishery is very viable options to be integrated in integrated farming system. Uh, ponds serve various useful purposes, domestic requirement of water, supplementary irrigation to cropping and fishery. So, it, it has several advantages, this pond. So, one can have pond and government of India or certain state governments have come up and they provide subsidy for uh, digging of the ponds. And with the traditional management, farmers obtain hardly 300 to 400 kg of wild and culture fish per hectare annually. However, uh, poly fish culture with the stocking uh, density of 7500 fingers and supplementary feeding with boost will boost the total biomass production. And beekeeping, beekeeping is good particularly when you have uh, flowers, uh, perennial flowers all around or kind of uh, uh, crops that can, that can provide nectar to the honeybees like lucerne is a good option and there may be many more crops. So, beekeeping is one of the most important agri based industry which does not require any raw material from the uh, artisan like other industry. Nectar and pollen from flowers are raw material which are available in plenty in nature. So, this is good and one can earn good income from the beekeeping also. Now, let us check what are the overall advantages of integrated farming system. So, increased productivity through increased economic yield per unit area per unit time. So, this was the basic principle of uh, integrated farming system to raise the income of the household or marginal farmers or small farmers. So, most of the time it has been seen that integrated farming system model which is suitable for a local condition can really give some extra income or some good profit to the farmers. Improved profitability achieved due to recycling of waste of enterprises as energy input for other system. So, here I can say maximum utilization of the byproducts or waste material of one enterprise and that can be used successfully in another uh, enterprise means there is very little wastage of the byproduct or waste products. No product is waste product you can say here. So, therefore, best utilization of waste product that is the way to increase the income. Greater sustainability in the production you have lot of diversity, biodiversity. So, it is said that this kind of system are sustainable and experience also suggests that uh, integrated farming system is a sustainable farming system. Integration of different production systems uh, and solve the problem of malnutrition. So, definitely it, uh, you can have fruits, vegetable and some animal product that can lead to reduction in malnutrition of the population. Uh, to provide uh, cash availability flow of money round the year, uh, at, at one particular month you will get income from one enterprise, for next 3-4 months another enterprise will come to the help of the farmer to provide. So, round, round the year the cash flow will be there round the year for the farmer. Energy crisis can be solved particularly when you have biogas plant, you have solar power plant or you have some, some plant to produce energy also. So, that way solving energy crisis, silvi pasture system reduces pressure on, on forests and system forces entrepreneur to know more thing to improve literacy rate, uh, provide opportunity for the growth of agri oriented industries, involvement of uh, rural women in production. And there may be some constraints also like nutritional value of crop residues are generally low in digestibility and protein content. Physical and chemical treatment of these residues is technically possible. Crop residues are primarily soil regenerators and so on. So, of course, there are some challenges like raise, we need to raise the productivity specified mixed crop livestock system, facilitate expansion of food production simultaneously safeguard the environment and make efficient use of natural resources. So, there may be some challenges which need to be uh, managed or, or people need to overcome them. So, overall today you have learned different agroforestry system, their need, principles, advantages, constraints and challenges. Hope this lecture was useful to you, uh, enjoy it, thank you very much.